if Milwaukee goes 0-4, loses tonight to St. Louis, and then gets swept somehow at home by Detroit, and if Colorado goes 4-1 with their two games against Philadelphia and three games at home against Washington, and if St. Louis sweeps out, beating Milwaukee tonight and sweeps the Cubs, which would be part of the Cubs going 0-5 to finish the season, that would be a six-way tie in the Ooh. National League at 91 and 71. I know it's kind of dumb and dumber. You're saying there's a chance, but there is. What in the world would happen then? MLB Networks and the Athletics. Jason Stark here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Jason? Rich, I'm good. Rooting for chaos, as always. Right? Well, it, that's... I mean, that's not out of the realm, right? I mean, that's not totally crazy. <laughs> Obviously, the Cubs having to lose out. They've already lost two in a row. That would be a seven-game losing streak for them to finish yeah. up the season. But, I mean... I, I, I would say it's it's all unlikely. But, you know, one of these years, something like this has to happen. We've never even had a three-way tie since they went to the division system. So, one of these years, we're going to have this madness. And... You know, that, cer- that scenario that you just described would be a problem. You know why? Because Major League Baseball does not have a six-way tiebreaker <laughs> or a five-way tiebreaker. Don't have one. Well, they'd have to figure out what head-to-head would kick people out until they get to a manageable number and then play certain amounts of elimination <laughs> games, right? And wouldn't that- well, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, because of what you're describing, you know, you'd have ties for two divisions. So you would have to play off for the division. Mm-hmm. And so that means you'd know the Dodgers and Rockies would have to pay, play head-to-head. Then there's a three-way tiebreaker formula to decide how a, you know, a division tie that I'm assuming would have to go into effect for Cubs, Brewers, and Cardinals. Cardinals. Oh my god. That would gosh. take a couple of days. That would it would once the smoke cleared, then you'd have the wild card thing settled. Got it? And then the Yankees and the A's would play it for for all some <laughs> marbles in between there for the American League. <laughs> Might have to play that, have them play every night till the National League got it figured out. What is what is going through the minds in Boston right now? I know Houston just wrapped up the AL West. They have uh, 100 win seasons back to back for the first time in their franchise's history. But what's going through the minds of a Red Sox team that has absolutely surprised by how how successful they have been all year long? And it looks like they, then they're going to have to play a five-game series against either the A's or their, their hated rivals from New York City. Jason? Well, the whole AL half of the draw is going to be epic. Epic. You'll have 300-win teams and, you know, potentially. Or if the Yankees don't get any, you have a team with the best record in baseball since the middle of June. Uh, and the the Red Sox are the best team. They've earned that. Um, you, you, you've been in New England once, twice. You, you, <laughs> they're surrounded by people who have figured out everything that could possibly go wrong. Chris Sale isn't ready. He loses game one. And they've got to turn to David Price, who's never won a postseason start. If Chris Sale loses game one, it's panic in the streets throughout New England. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But they're the best team. Are they the favorite? I don't know, but they're the best team. And when it comes down to it, um, they, they, JD Martinez and the in the crucible of the playoffs in Boston. We will see how that all goes down. And and obviously Houston's been there and done that. Do you believe Boston is the best team though? You you called epic. Are they? Are well, they? When you if you had to put your marker on somebody, who do you put it on? Jason Stark. I I, I think that the most complete team, if healthy, would be the Astros. Um, and yet I've had people tell me that the winner of Astros Indians, the series I'll be covering is going to go win the world series because the Indians are incredibly dangerous. I mean, they're top three offense in the game with a, with a great rotation. And, you know, there's questions about whether their bullpen has got itself straightened out, but you know, October affords a lot more rest than the regular season. And that plays into their hands. They've got a great manager. Um, it's, I, I don't know anybody who's got a good feel for who's going to win, especially over in the American League. And then in the National League, who's the best team? I mean, if you had to put your marker on a team in the NL out of all these teams that we've thrown out there, who, who would it be? I, I, the, the Dodgers are the deepest team. They, you know, they had a game the other day where they had five guys on their bench who had hit 20 homers this year. 
It's just that their bench is better than some teams' lineups. And, you know, depth helps you survive the season. Whether depth helps you win the World Series is a whole other story. But I think if you look at the entire National League field, there's so many flaws in every team. The Dodgers have the fewest flaws. So I would pick them. But then am I picking a Dodgers Astros World Series rematch? That never happens. I know. But it, first, they got to get there. It just seems that they yep. just can't get on track every single time you think they're in and then they're rolling like last year. Something happens, right? And you know what? I am telling my Dodger friends around here, and, and it's kind of heresy for them. I'm like, either Seeger is going to have to learn another position or Turner's gone because I don't think they're letting Manny Machado walk out of here, certainly if they make the playoffs and see what this young man can do. He is dynamite. What do you think? Uh, I, I actually don't think that Manny winds up back in L.A. Really? Anything's possible. But um, Justin Turner is so important to that team. I know he is. Seager's so important to that team. Um, the left side of their infield is probably the most settled part of their team, unless – Corey Seager's got long-term issues, and he's not going to be able to throw the ball across the diamond. That would change everything. Um, you know, one of the Dodgers people said to me after they made that trade, when I asked about this very thing, we don't do this. You know, we don't we don't do the eight-year, ten-year contract at two hundred, three hundred, four hundred million dollars. And I really think that Manny Machado is going to wind up with the team that puts the biggest pile of money in front of him. I, I just don't think that's going to be the Dodgers. No. Uh, look, I, I, he's so good, man. I mean, like, I don't know how you let somebody <laughs> that good walk. Certainly, if they make the playoffs, I think he's going to have an incredible October. And if he's a difference maker for them, when it all on the line, yeah. you, you, you've seen the, with, with, with the Dodgers the last few years, even last year in the, in the playoffs, uh, getting to game seven, just getting scratching out runs sometimes for them was so difficult. I, I I don't know I I'm for again you're 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 the insider obviously with the the athletic and, and MLB network it just strikes me that that would be tough to let him walk if he has an incredible I, October right um, I, I I just think it's a different climate it's a different front office okay than back in the days of the last Manny right when you know after Manny Ramirez did what he did in two thousand eight. Um, there was just so much sentiment and so much emotion that they had to bring him back. I don't think this front office makes emotional decisions. And so if, if Manny Machado is to return, it's a baseball decision. It's a financial decision. It would be really contingent on how many years and dollars the investment would have to be. I, it, this is I don't want to say they're cold-blooded, but they're not going to get caught up in the sentiment, even if the sentiment follows them winning the World Series. Jason Stark, MLB Network here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, just whip through it. Your, your AL MVP, Cy Young, and same for the National League. What do you have? Uh, you know, this is one of those years where there, there's almost nothing that's cut and, dry, cut and dried. You mm -hmm. want me to do AL first? Sure. I, I think Mookie Betts is the AL MVP. Um Barely over Mike Trout. Uh, the the Cy Young debate is fascinating because I mean Justin Verlander's numbers with incredible volume, with a lot more volume, 134 more hitters than Blake Snell, Blake Snell makes a a fascinating debate. But I think that Blake Snell is going to win and should win. And you, know, the, you know the only two starting pitchers uh, in the DH era. Who had a lower ERA than he has, and he's at one nine zero. Or Pedro Martinez and Ron Guidry I've back in the day, I've, and that's gonna that sways me. I've heard of them. NL uh, Jacob Degrom should win the Cy Young, wins the side, and the, I, I'm agonizing over NL MVP. Mm -hmm. I have a column uh, that, that that's posting on the Athletic today, yep. on which I pick Javi Baez, but admit that I'm a voter. I could still change my mind, uh -huh. depending on what happens this week. Yelich, who would it be? Him? He's so good. Ba Baez or Yelich 
is what I'm down to. Mm-hmm. And Kristen Yelich has made an incredible case, and even an, inc- an incredible case this week. The, the final week of the season narrative can sway this vote. I don't think there's any question. I, I would guess Kristen Yelich is going to win. I just wanted to make the point that we, and we think of the Cubs as a star-studded team, but in truth, the Brewers position players this year have been much better than the Cubs. And the Cubs have needed everything that Javi Baez has done offensively, defensively, on the bases, the energy jolt every night. Uh, it, but it's really a fun debate. No, I know. Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, – I agree with you. Last week should matter. I mean, certainly is if division's on the line and playoffs are on the line – Yelich with a bases clearing triple in St. Yeah. Louis. Okay, yeah, in St. Louis, that is that when when he landed on third last night, I'm like, that's the definition of value right there. That is mo- that was a most valuable hit for the Brewers, and I, I know you can't boil it down to one at bat, but when you're boiling it down to push coming to shove, I don't know, maybe that's it. Yeah, I, hey, I agree. I've, look, I've voted on this stuff many times. And you, you, the last impression is a powerful impression. That isn't right. It isn't fair. I'm not sure why it is. It's human nature. And there's so much on the line this week. Uh, you know, the Cubs have led the Brewers and had the best record in the league since the All-Star break. And if the Brewers overtake them in the final week and Christian Yelich has this kind of week, and this kind of second half, he's going to win, and he would deserve to win. Well, a little bit of a preview of what we're going to see on The Athletic later on. Jason, thanks for joining us here. Really appreciate it. Always enjoyed, Rich. Thanks. You bet. You bet. At Jason ST, uh, with a Y, by the way, for Jason on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.